Your child may never step foot in a classroom. Strange, right? But here's the twist. They're actually getting a head start on working remotely, thanks to AI and VR headsets. Picture this. A generation of kids learning from anywhere, guided by artificial intelligence that knows their learning style better than any human teacher ever could. It's not science fiction, it's the education revolution happening right now. Welcome back, Curious Minds, to another mind-bending episode of Emerging Science Digest. I'm your host, Theo, ready to be your tour guide through the labyrinth of cutting-edge discoveries. Today, my fellow education evolution enthusiasts, we're diving headfirst into the AI-powered classroom of tomorrow. We'll explore how artificial intelligence is not just assisting teachers, but potentially replacing traditional classrooms altogether. From personalized learning algorithms to AI teaching assistants that never need a coffee break, we're unpacking it all. So sharpen those synapses, my dear cerebral voyagers. Whether you're a tech-savvy teacher, a forward-thinking parent, or just someone who wonders if robots will be grading essays in the future, this episode is for you. Let's embark on this educational expedition and see if we can crack the code of tomorrow's learning landscape. everybody. Let's dive right in. We're tackling EdTech in 2024 today. Got to make sure you're ahead of the curve. Absolutely. It's a fast moving world out there. No kidding. So we've been pouring over reports, articles, you name it, all about where education and technology actually meet. Think of this like your cheat sheet for the future of learning. I like it. Your cheat sheet. Right. We're talking 10 EdTech trends to expect in 2024. That's from EdTech Magazine. And then we've got this really fascinating report from Stanford about how tech is going to reshape the classroom, seriously changing things up. Yeah, it's not just about the gadgets anymore. And to that point, there's even this piece from the 74, you know, the 74. Anyway, it really got me thinking, is AI going to be a teacher's new best friend? Or is it something we should be, I don't know, a little wary of? <laughs> Yeah, there's always that balance, right? The yep. potential. And then also, like, what are the implications? Exactly. So are you ready? I think you are. Let's break it down. Let's do it. Okay, so one thing that jumps out from, like, all of these sources, AI. I mean, it's everywhere, but it's not just a buzzword anymore. This stuff is actually transforming how classrooms work, like, down in the trenches. It really is remarkable when you think about it. Grading, lesson planning, all these fundamental teacher tasks... AI is stepping in. It's changing the day-to-day -day for educators in a big way. Okay, so it's not just some shiny new gadget like, ooh, look what it can do. It's actually useful. Useful, but, and this is super important, it's not a magic bullet, right? Teachers are still essential. And speaking of essential, there's another big shift happening right now, and it has to do with money. Specifically, EdTech Magazine really highlighted this whole thing with the ESR funds drying up. Oh, yeah, the ESR cliff. It's ah. like when you realize you were on that free trial and now, bam, you got to pay or it's gone. And a lot of schools got really used to having that extra tech cash. So for those who don't know, ESR, that was like this lifeline for schools, right? It pumped a ton of money into their tech, but that's ending. Yeah, like suddenly your coffee subscription's canceled. <laughs> Back to instant. <laughs> that's rough. So what happens now? That's the million dollar question. And that's where sustainable solutions come in. You know, Stanford's report really drove this home. Mm. We can't just buy a bunch of tablets, call it a day. We're talking long term planning here. It's like, OK, cool. Everyone's got a tablet. But what about the next five years, 10 years down the line? What then? Exactly. Device life cycles, maintenance, teacher training. It's about building a real digital infrastructure in education, not just applying these temporary fixes. So not just a quick paint job. We're talking about a full-on renovation. Okay, so that's the big picture. But how does that actually play out? What are the concrete trends we're seeing? Well, 
One that kept popping up everywhere, individualized learning. Ooh, that phrase. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's lost as punch, you know, like it's buried under a pile of buzzwords. I hear you. It's one of those ed tech phrases that everyone throws around. But the exciting thing is we're finally starting to see platforms that actually live up to the hype. Okay, so let's talk more action. Give me an example. So imagine you've got a student, they're really struggling with, let's say, physics. Right now, they might just fall through the cracks. But an adaptive platform that could pinpoint that struggle and offer specific support. Hold on. So the software is like, hey, I see you struggling over there. Here's a hand. Exactly. Targeted exercises, simulations, whatever they need, all focused on that one area where they're stuck. It's like having a personal tutor built into the software. Okay, that is pretty cool. So it's not just about having the tech. It's about having the tech that knows what you need when you need it. Exactly. It's about using tech to make learning more personalized and effective. Okay, so we've got individualized learning. But what about immersive technology? I got to be honest. I hear immersive tech, and I just picture clunky VR headsets gathering dust in the back of a classroom. I get it. I get it. But the real story with immersive tech isn't about the gadgets. It's about accessibility. Accessibility. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So one article talked about students using their phones, you know, the things they have in their pockets every day, to create 360-degree scenarios. Wait, hold on. Students are creating immersive experiences right on their phones. That's what I'm saying. It's not about fancy headsets or expensive equipment. So we're talking virtual field trips to the Amazon rainforest, underwater explorations, all from a device they already have. You got it. And think about the equity implications of that. Not every school can afford fancy VR setups or class trips across the world, but this, this is something most students can access. Mind blown. Okay, last but not least, let's talk gamification. Because seriously, it's everywhere you look these days. Mm. But is it actually effective? Or are we just slapping a digital reward system onto old school teaching methods? It's a great question. And the answer, like with most things in education, is it depends. How is it designed? What are the learning objectives? Are we rewarding critical thinking and problem solving or just right answers? It's like the difference between giving a kid a cookie for, I don't know, finishing their vegetables versus giving them a healthy snack that actually fuels their body. I like that analogy. It's not about making learning fun for the sake of fun. It's about designing experiences where the gamification is intertwined with the learning itself. So it's less about putting lipstick on a pig and more about like breeding a smarter pig. Sorry, bad analogy. Ha. No, I get it. It's about intentionality. We need to make sure th those game mechanics are serving a real educational purpose. And that's where teachers are more important than ever. Right, because you can have all the fancy tech in the world, but if you don't know how to use it effectively, it's meaningless. Absolutely. It's about empowering educators to be the curators, the critics, the guides in this new world of EdTech. Welcome back to the deep dive. This has been an incredible overview, but we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the other side of the coin. It's not all sunshine and roses in ed tech land, yeah. right? Yeah, there's always a flip side, right? It's like every shiny new gadget comes with one of those terms and conditions pages that nobody reads, but everybody worries about. Exactly. And in ed tech, those terms and conditions, they're things like data privacy, teacher burnout, even this whole idea of AI replacing teachers altogether. These are real concerns. Okay, so no more sugarcoating. Let's get into it. It's not about sugarcoating. It's about being realistic, yeah. right? So data privacy, that's huge. Right. We're dealing with student information, super sensitive stuff. But instead of shying away from technology, we need to use this as a chance to teach digital literacy. Right, because we can't just throw technology at kids and be like, okay, Good luck figuring it out. Don't click on anything suspicious. Exactly. We need to equip students, teachers, parents, everybody with the knowledge to actually navigate the digital world safely and ethically. So it's almost like a digital citizenship crash course. Exactly. And you know what? This ties into the teacher burnout issue, too. We can't just keep piling on new tools. It's like showing up at a restaurant. You're expecting a nice meal. And they're like, actually, it's cook your own food night. And they just hand you a chef's knife. It's a recipe for disaster. We need ongoing professional development, support, training, the whole shebang. Teachers need time to learn, to experiment, to feel confident with these new tools. Because otherwise... 
The tech becomes the problem, not the solution. And that's where, ironically, some of that AI we talked about earlier can actually help. Oh, you mean like AI grading essays so teachers don't have to pull all-nighters? Exactly. AI can take on those tasks, free up more time for teachers to do what they do best, connect with their students, foster a love of learning, you know, the human stuff. Because at the end of the day, no robot is going to replace a good teacher. Exactly. It's about finding that balance, using AI to support, not supplant, the heart of education. So it's less about man versus machine and more about man and machine teaming up for educational awesomeness. Now you're getting it. It's about empowering teachers, not replacing them. Okay, so we've talked about the challenges, but I gotta say, even with those, there's still this feeling of, I don't know, a cautious optimism, right? Like we're on the verge of something big. Absolutely, there are bumps in the road, no doubt, but there's also this incredible sense of possibility. It's like standing at the edge of like uncharted territory. And we get to chart it. We're witnessing this potential for tech to personalize learning and make it more equitable, more accessible. It's about breaking down barriers, meeting students where they are. Exactly. We have this chance to reshape education in a way that truly benefits every student. So as we kind of wrap things up here, any parting thoughts for our listeners as they navigate this brave new world of ed tech? This whole conversation, it boils down to this. If technology can truly personalize learning, what happens to the traditional classroom? What does that even look like when every student's on their own path? That's the million dollar question, right? Mm. If we can truly personalize learning, what happens to that whole idea of the traditional classroom? It's like we're challenging a century of assumptions about how education should work. Right, we've always done it this way, so this is how it has to be. But what if that's not true anymore? It makes you wonder, are we even asking the right questions anymore? See, and that's what I love about this conversation, because it's not about having all the answers. It's about being brave enough to ask the tough questions. Absolutely. Like, we've been talking about personalized learning, but what does that even mean? Is it just about letting kids learn at their own pace, or is it something bigger? It's got to be bigger, right? Yeah. It's about recognizing that each student is unique with their own strengths, interests, passions. Exactly. And a truly personalized system would embrace those differences, not try to iron them out. So instead of trying to fit everyone into the same mold, mm -hmm. we're giving them the tools and the freedom to create their own molds. Now you're getting it. It's about empowering students to own their learning journey. I love that. Okay, so let's say we embrace this whole personalized learning thing. What does that mean for teachers? Well, their role definitely changes. They become less like the sage on the stage and more like a guide, a mentor, a facilitator. More like that coach on the sidelines, cheering them on, giving them pointers. But ultimately, it's the students who are running the race. Exactly. It's about trusting students to take ownership of their learning and giving them the support they need to succeed on their own terms. Wow, that's a powerful vision for the future of education. But we have to be honest, it's a vision that comes with some serious challenges, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're talking about a massive systemic shift. It's not just about changing classrooms. It's about changing mindsets. It's about challenging long-held beliefs, breaking down barriers, and let's be honest, probably ruffling some feathers along the way. But change is never easy. And if we want to create an education system that truly prepares students for the future, then we have to be willing to embrace these challenges head on. So... Where do we even begin? I mean, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer scale of it all. Well, I think it starts with small steps. It starts with empowering teachers to experiment with new approaches, to personalize learning in their own classrooms. So it's about giving educators the freedom to innovate, to think outside the box, to try new things and see what works. Exactly. And it's about being open to the possibility of failure because not every experiment is gonna be a home run. But even in those failures, there are valuable lessons to be learned. It's all part of the process, right? Exactly. And the more we encourage this kind of experimentation and innovation, the closer we'll get to that vision of a truly personalized and equitable education system. I am so here for that. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the wild world of EdTech, I think the biggest takeaway for me is this. The future of learning isn't about replacing teachers with robots or turning classrooms into video game arcades. It's about using technology thoughtfully and intentionally to create learning experiences that are engaging, relevant, and yes, even fun. It's about meeting students where they are, recognizing their unique strengths, and empowering them to become lifelong learners. And that's a future worth fighting for. Absolutely. And on that note, a huge thank you to you 
our amazing listeners, for joining us on this incredible journey into the heart of ed tech. It's been a pleasure sharing these ideas with you. And a huge shout out to you, expert speaker, for lending your incredible insights and expertise to this conversation. It's always a pleasure picking your brain. The pleasure was all mine, really. It's not every day you get to geek out about the future of education with such a passionate audience. You know, it's conversations like these that give me hope for the future. So let's keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in education. Until next time, keep those learning caps on, and we'll see you in the next deep dive. We've reached the end of our AI-powered educational odyssey. Feeling a bit like you've just stepped out of a time machine? I know I am. So, what's your take? Are you ready to enroll your kids in AI Academy? Or are you clutching your old school pencils a little tighter? Perhaps you're somewhere in the middle, seeing both the promise and the pitfalls of this brave new world of education. If this episode sparked your neurons, don't keep that mental electricity to yourself. Share it with a teacher who's still using overhead projectors or that tech-obsessed friend who'd probably volunteer their kids for an AI teaching experiment. And hey, drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team bring on the robots or let's pump the brakes on progress? Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call the future of education. Remember, every eureka moment in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning keep exploring, and who knows, maybe you or your AI-assisted kids will spark the next revolution in learning. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and keep looking up. The classroom of the future might just be in the cloud. This is Theo, signing off from the frontiers of educational science. <laughs>